Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, truce in the PDP yet to happen as National Chairman Muru Sharif threatens to jail Ahmed McCarthy and his group for alleged contempt of court. Ahmed McCarthy group fights back, says Sharif has no right to take over the party's secretariat until the Supreme Court decides. OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Barkindo says OPEC countries lost $1 trillion oil revenue, the decline in global oil prices. And U.S. President Donald Trump proposes $5 billion increase in military spending. And on business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria boosts liquidity of foreign exchange markets with additional $180 million. On Sports News Tonight, Roger Federer is back after the Australian Open with a 6-1-6-3 win at the Dubai Open. And from Abuja, I'm Linda Akibe. Former President Olusha Gwabasanjo advocates strong synergy between the public and private sectors for the national economy to thrive. We begin tonight with a focus on the crisis rocking the leadership of the People's Democratic Party, which appears not to be abating, even with the judgments of the Court of Appeal. The national chairman of the party, Senator Ali Modu Sharif, has asked the Court of Appeal, sitting in Port Harcourt River State, to jail his rival, Senator Ahmed Bakarfi, and some of his loyalists over what he describes as contempt of court. In the suit, Senator Sharif is accusing Senator McCarthy, alongside other prominent leaders of the caretaker committee of the party, of flouting the order of the court, which was delivered on February 17, 2017, and asking the court to commit them to prison for one year. The appeal court in the earlier judgment had, in addition to pronouncing Sharif as the PDP national chairman, ruled that the removal of the National Working Committee was wrong and the constitution of the caretaker committee illegal. A group of protesters loyal to the Senator Ahmed Bakarfi caretaker committee has taken to the National Secretariat of the party in Abuja in protest, calling on the police to stop the national chairman, Senator Ali Modu Sharif, from entering the party's office. Senator Ali Modu Sharif moved into the National Secretariat of the PDP on Friday, relying on the Court of Appeal judgments that declared him authentic chairman of the party. But the group loyal to Ahmed McCarthy is insisting that the national chairman must wait for the Supreme Court judgments on who should be the party's chairman. Exactly nine months after the National Secretariat of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, was sealed by the police in 2016, Senator Ali Modu Sharif reopened the Secretariat last weekend and ordered its renovation ahead of its resumption this week. Sharif is relying on a Port Harcourt Court of Appeal judgment that declared him the authentic chairman of the PDP. But this group, loyal to the Senator Ahmed McGarfi Kataka Committee, is protesting the reopening of the party's national secretariat by Senator Ali Modi Sharif. So if there's a lot of crisis here, PDP cannot move forward. And that's why we mobilize ourselves. We are here. We want to move forward with so many activities. 2019 is fast approaching. Sharif should step aside. Away from the protest, the spokesperson of the Ahmed McCarthy group addresses a news conference asking the police to stop the national chairman from accessing the party secretariat. If we are calling on the police and the general public and lovers of the peace and democracy to ask Senator Sheriff and Co. to respect the ongoing litigation processes, the police will ensure that Sheriff and Co. do not occupy the national secretariat in order to avoid breakdown of law and order. We have noticed that the police have taken sides in this matter perhaps because of directive from the APC, but it's teaching style in time, saves nine. Meanwhile, the National Deputy Chairman of the PDP, Mr. Cairo Ujugo, has described both the protests and the call to stop Sheriff as illegal. We have set the time with that number, that if there is anybody destroying this party, if there is anybody working for people outside this party, it is the same people led by McAfee and Adeye. If he says he's going to the Supreme Court, we're not stopping him. 
we are ready for the Supreme Court. If he says he's going, when the Supreme Court gives him the judgment, let him come and take over. For almost two years, the battle for the soul of the People's Democratic Party has raged on, defying every seeming solution proffered by its members. Away from party politics, a special prayer session by kinsmen of President Mahmoud Buhari has held at the Emir's Palace in Katsina. Governor Aminu Masari of Katsina State led the crowd of indigents and Muslim clerics to pray for the president's recovery and safe return home. Governor Masari said that the president followed due process before embarking on his trip and appealed to Nigerians for more patience and understanding. Efforts by the federal government to fast-track the development of the Niger Delta appears to be in full swing as it plans to site a $20 billion gas industrial park in the area through a public-private partnership. This was made known by the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, today while meeting at the presidential villa with a group of international investors and developers on the project. The consortium is set to be made up of Fortune 500 companies from South Korea, China and the Middle East. A statement from the vice president's office explains that the project will be located in Ogidiben Delta State and is envisaged to be a regional hub for all gas-based industries. Professor Shibajo adds that the federal government takes the project very seriously, just as it is ready to make several other commitments to change the fortune of the oil-producing states. This comes against the backdrop of the recent visit by the acting president to the oil-producing community to demonstrate the resolve of the Buhari administration to pursue a new vision for the Niger Delta. Meanwhile, the Secretary General of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, Mr. Mohamed Barkindo, says member countries lost $1 trillion oil revenue to the fall in global oil prices between 2014 and 2016. The OPEC scribe as if these losses were in terms of deferred and outright cancellations of projects across its entire value chain. Barkindo, who revealed this during a visit to the Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, commended the minister for taking steps to solve Nigeria's long-standing challenges with joint venture cash call obligations. Our correspondent, Omelogo Nadi, reports. Executive members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, on an official visit to the Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, led by their chairman, Dr. Omar Farouk. This visit is coming at a time when oil prices appear to be on a slow but steady rebound following difficulties of OPEC member countries to manage their domestic economies to overcome a recession occasioned by a dip in oil prices. The Secretary General of OPEC, Nigeria's Mohamed Barkindo, says the cartel globally lost $1 trillion in two years and needs consistent investments to maintain current production. This industry globally has lost nearly $1 trillion US dollars in terms of deferred projects, in terms of outright cancellation of projects across the supply chain, upstream, midstream, downstream. And this is the greatest threat that is facing future supply, the security of supply. Amidst the global challenges, the OPEC Secretary General is impressed by what he terms an innovative and practical approach of Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum that ended the country's long standing challenges with joint venture cash call obligations. The approach has been innovative, uh, the solution uh, is very practical. Uh, you are clearing an overhang of debt uh, that is too high, uh, yet maintaining a level of production and also focusing on an incremental growth that will continue to sustain not only the industry but the domestic uh, economy. He says the survival of Nigeria's oil industry through 80% crash in oil prices over a two-year period remains a miracle, saying the worst is now behind. Omelogo Nadi Channels Television News. Former Governor of Cross River State, Mr. Donald Duke, has berated the management of the nation's revenue from oil crude oil sales. 
He says the nation's economic deficits would have been appropriately resolved with the oil revenue, but for lack of political will, which according to him is the nation's biggest challenge. The former governor joined other panelists at the first edition of the Economic and Business Strategies Limited Red Lecture for 2017, organized by Mr. Manos Paco. Our correspondent, Gloria Omezuke, reports. Um, and chief strategist at the economic this is the first edition of the Economic and Business Strategies Limited Refined Economic Development Lecture for 2017. <laughs> Students and entrepreneurs were participants at this quarterly lecture series. The time for e the organizer, Mr. Magnus Pakol, underscored that the forum is to exchange ideas to make Africa more economically competitive. The government does not give you economic salvation. It is something that you as an individual will have to go and get yourself. And economic salvation really is about the ability to produce goods and services that the people want and that they can demand effectively. For Former governor of Cross River State, Mr. Donald Duke, and other panelists clearly enumerated the causes of stagnant growth in the country. The average net price per barrel over the last 15 to 20 15 years has been about 20 dollars a barrel so if you leverage even 5 billion barrels you can raise about a hundred billion dollars we should have world-class highways traversing the length and breadth of this country rail lines traversing the length and breadth of this country we don't have a deep sea port in nigeria if you, the resources are there the problem is not the resources, the problem is the application of those resources, making sure that every dollar that is spent, every naira that is spent is of value. And that's the biggest challenge we have as a people. If you can spend your time over the internet, have you ever thought that, okay, get your friends, four or five of you, to come together? To say, what can we do to develop a business out of this internet that we are doing? For other participants, the country's import over dependence and interest rates is a huge challenge. To bring interest rates down, what do you do? Simply increase the supply of capital. And in this form, in this in this context, increase the savings rates. Unanimously, the participants believe that developing ideas or implementing already existing ones would curb drainage of resources out of the system. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Let's head back to the courts for a bit now. The Federal High Court in Abuja has reserved a ruling until March 13th to decide on two separate applications filed by Shell Oil Exploration Limited and ship oil exploration seeking to set aside an order of forfeiture granted the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in respect of oil prospecting license 245. Just as John Soho was urged by the two oil companies to set aside the order he granted the EFCC on January 26, 2017, on the grounds of the EFCC chairman, who is the applicant in the ex parte motion, was not the proper person to file it. Council Shell Petroleum Professor Kainshola Ajayi told the court that the EFCC chairman was wrong in law in bringing the ex parte motion that led to the order of forfeiture in his capacity as chairman. However, opposing the application, the EFCC counsel, Mr. Johnson Ojogwani, asked the court to dismiss the two applications on the grounds that there was no proper suit before the court. After listening to both parties, Justice John Soho adjourned ruling till March 13th, 2017. In part two, after the break, we'll be looking at the Nigerian Economic Recovery Plan. Now we'll be joined on the news at 10 by a frontline economist, Dr. Biodun Adedipe.